the absence of chemistry in mainstream cosmology is frightening. They talk of no exothermic reactions or endothermic reactions. I guess you could do the same thing Electric Universe does, being that mainstream cosmology ignores electricity in outer space. You could say it's a chemical universe, and that would be more encompassing than modern cosmology. As well, modern cosmology ignores rocks and minerals. Why not call it the Rocky Universe? Modern cosmology also ignores metals. Why not call it the Metal Universe? Basically, modern cosmology ignores anything to do with science because it's not a science, it's religion. Other th ideas people want to discuss? Go ahead. Ask me questions. I'll overview them on the little whiteboard to the best of my ability, and I will be as creative as I can. As anybody knows who watches my page, I'm not a establishment uh, gatekeeper. I don't ridicule people, and I don't, you know, accept nonsense just because the establishment says so. As well, I don't accept alternative ideas just because they say so either. No. I fully examine all the ideas that I see, and if they make sense, I talk about them. There was one thing in general that I wanted to discuss with this. I had received a few comments on Vixra on the commenting section of people, of a person saying that they were upset with Vixra not having quality standards. Now, quality standards is something of a misnomer because who determines the quality? Is there some old wise man in outer space looking down at us saying, Don't publish that Vixra paper. No, publish this one. Publish that one. No. Quality standards don't exist. I mean, sure, you can check for grammar and internal consistency. But quality these days, in the way establishment likes to say it, is if, they're, if the papers are reviewed by a peer, so to speak. Somebody who had... It's that same level of expertise, as they like to say. But in this specific case of them not understanding basic star evolution, there are no peers. They're all the blind leading the blind. So to say there can be, there can be quality standards inside of modern astronomy, as I like to say it, is just simply saying that they disagree with everything and they're upset with the fact that they don't agree with people what they said in the past. That's all that means. It just means they're angry. It has nothing to do with quality standards. It's them being angry and wanting to voice up saying there are no quality standards. It, 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 it's not even an argument. Another idea that was on my mind that I wanted to discuss here is Electric Universe apparently has a new speaker there, and I watched one of the videos on their Thunderbolts page on YouTube, and he mentioned something about ejection from stars, like stars eject objects which make the planets. And I'm not a mathematician. I think math is a dodge for the most part. It takes physics first, and then you do the math. But, sorry, I keep on burping breakfast. If the sun ejects objects, okay, then we should expect the objects it ejected to be traveling at at least the escape velocity it would have required that object to leave the sun at. For instance, if the sun has an escape velocity of 617,000 meters a second, which is 617 kilometers a second, that's hauling ass, okay? Then we should expect Mercury to be traveling at that velocity, Earth to be traveling at that velocity, Venus, Mars. But the fact is that they don't. They don't travel at that velocity at all. Earth travels at 30 kilometers a second, not 617,000. 
or 617 kilometers a second. That's a difference of what, 20 times slower? Quite frankly, it doesn't possess the velocity to have come out of the sun. And neither does Venus. And neither does Mercury. And neither does Mars. So, the hypothesis of them coming out of the sun has to account for how is it that they're moving so slow? How did these objects escape something that had an escape velocity that was mind-numbingly fast? Quite frankly, I just see it as an implausible, implausible scenario. If anything, the sun will collect all of its material and keep all of it as it collects it cool and die. And it will start shrinking. And all that leftover material that it collects from interstellar space or the material that was around when it was born will clump together in the center, forming the new planet. Of course, establishment astronomy, they're not aware of this reality. They're not aware of how stars actually behave because they're taught how they behave on blackboards in school. They're, they're not ever taught to use their uh, creative thinking skills and the problem solving ability. They're taught to get your A, move on, go get a job, happily ever after. They're not, they're not taught to think outside the box. I guess, I guess it just, this is gonna take some time to solve all that stuff. Now, I was looking at my uh, Rocks and Gems book again. It's a pretty cool book. I like a lot of the things in here. And, uh, of course, you know, I consider myself to be a rock hound, somebody who likes to collect these things as they pop up because they're just beautiful. Um, I wanted to go over a specific type of rock. I think I can find it here. Hang on one second. Anyways, it was ice. Now, ice is a really interesting substance, and I do need to I do need to study it. Water, ice, water vapor, because it's not that water exists in the solar system as water or ice. I think the majority of it exists as water vapor, which means it's a gaseous uh, stage in its, you know, it's a gaseous phase. And it has properties that uh, prevent heat from escaping a star. Say, for instance, you have Jupiter. It will have a lot of water vapor on the top of it, trapping a lot of the heat and extending the life of Jupiter for very many, many, many years. As well, I also think that Neptune and Uranus have layers of water vapor in them, very thick layers, mind you. So, I guess what I'm saying is the pneumatic and hydraulic properties of water and water vapor, pneumatic meaning water vapor, hydraulic meaning water, as it condenses and squeezes the interior of the star, and cools a lot of the other material because it has a high specific heat capacity. But I'm going to go ahead and study hydraulics and pneumatics in the case of water and ice. And hopefully I get a lot of it right. I know I'm going to get a lot of it wrong. And maybe I'll make a presentation on, the, on that substance as it changes through various uh, uh, phases. Because establishment astronomy, they don't talk about how water vapor changes into water during stellar evolution. They're still caught up on their nuclear fusion nonsense. So uh, I guess that really sums up this talk. Uh, today is April 17th, 2015.